Tom Jones is now over 80. How he lives is sad. Do you truly understand the sorrowful narrative that unfolded away from the glow of fame surrounding Tom Jones? Renowned not only for his commanding vocal talent, but also as a symbol of his generation, Tom Jones continues to capture the public's admiration even beyond the milestone of 80 years. Despite his steadfast commitment, the challenges and hardships he faced are often overshadowed by his celebrity. This video invites you to explore the lesser known aspects of Tom Jones's life, a journey marked by profound sadness and struggle beneath the sheen of success. Discover the unique story of a man known as the Golden Voice, whose existence was intertwined with both remarkable achievement and deep sorrow. Born into the humble surroundings of 57 Kingsland Terrace, Treforest, on June 7, 1940, Thomas John Woodward would rise to international fame as the legendary singer Tom Jones. The son of Frieda Jones and Thomas Woodward, a diligent coal miner, Tom inherited a rich blend of heritage. His roots were deeply English, yet imbued with Welsh influence. His maternal grandfather was Welsh. His maternal grandmother, born in Wales, had English parents from Somerset and Wiltshire, and his paternal grandfather originated from Gloucestershire. This diverse background laid the foundation for a man who would become an icon in the music industry. Tom Jones's path to becoming a singer began in his school choir, a pivotal moment that set the stage for his extraordinary career. However, his childhood was not without its trials. Diagnosed with tuberculosis at just 12 years old, Jones faced a grave and potentially fatal challenge. The disease necessitated a long convalescence, confining him to bed for two years, a period he would later describe as the most difficult of his life. Yet, it was within this enforced solitude and physical restriction that Jones found comfort and escape in music and art, discovering a resilient spirit that would define his journey. In a romance sparked during their youth, he and his high school sweetheart, Melinda Rose Linda Trenchard, pledged their lives to each other. Their commitment was sealed not with lavish festivities, but through a swift ceremony on March 2nd, 1957, necessitated by Linda's pregnancy. As mere teenagers, they took this significant step into adulthood, and shortly after their vows, their son Mark was born. This event forever linked their youthful love with the enduring duties of parenting. In the early days of his family life, Tom Jones undertook various low-paying jobs, including labor in construction and employment at a glove factory to provide for his loved ones. This period of hard work was a stark contrast to the fame and admiration he would later experience. However, the strength of his voice suggested a future far brighter than his current circumstances. Challenges arose within their union, notably due to infidelity, as Tom Jones's alluring charm led to numerous well-documented affairs, each one a deep wound to Linda. Despite the hurt, Linda's commitment never wavered. She remained steadfast in her vows embodying loyalty at its most resilient. As time moved forward, April 2016 marked a profound loss. The music world mourned a legend, yet Tom Jones faced a personal tragedy far greater. Linda, his steadfast companion, the embodiment of love and support, was taken by cancer, leaving an irreplaceable emptiness behind. In honoring her memory, Tom made a poignant choice to sell the Los Angeles family mansion letting go of not just its opulence, but also the wealth of memories contained within. Clinging to treasured photographs, he embraced them as a tangible connection to Linda's final desires. Consequently, he settled into a modest apartment in London, the city that had been a testament to their shared journey of love. It was a moment that Linda, Tom Jones's late wife, would have deeply appreciated. Throughout their life together, she was his steadfast support, the fixer of all problems, his unwavering pillar. Facing the inevitability of her passing, she imparted to him a courage that only the prospect of death can inspire, urging him, you can't crumble with me, don't fall with me now. You've done everything you can. You must carry on and do what you do. It's as if the song, resonating with both agony and affection, was crafted expressly for such a moment. Remarkably, the track ascended to the pinnacle of the UK iTunes chart within just 24 hours, a clear reflection of the profound empathy and shared grief between Jones and his audience. While Tom Jones's career was marked by opulence and acclaim, it was not without its shadows. 
He confessed to numerous fleeting encounters with fans, reaching up to 250 in a single year at the height of his popularity. These brief liaisons, though numerous, often left a sense of emptiness and yearning. His romantic entanglements included notable figures such as American singer Mary Wilson, presenter Charlotte Laws, and Marjorie Wallace, a former Miss World. Despite these connections, a significant relationship remained neglected. His bond with his son, Jonathan Berkery. Jones showed little interest in forging a relationship with Berkery, distancing himself from the son he fathered. Throughout his life, Tom Jones navigated a myriad of challenges, including becoming a tax exile due to the 98% income tax levied by the UK's Labour government, elected in 1974. In search of solace, he relocated to the radiant hills of Los Angeles, where in 1976 he acquired a mansion previously owned by Dean Martin. This residence offered not just a haven, but also bore witness to moments of both joy and melancholy. Within its walls, Tom found a sanctuary and the space to reflect on the deep connections forged in the 1960s. It was here that he and his companions found mutual comfort, reminiscing on a shared history that bonded them closely together. Tom Jones revealed the depths of his experiences in the 2015 autobiography, Over the Top and Back. The book serves as more than a personal memoir. It is a vibrant chronicle of British pop culture and the world of light entertainment beginning in the 1960s. While offering a candid glimpse into his life filled with triumphs, personal failings and a longing for home, Jones's narrative stops short of satisfying all curiosities. His story navigates through the peaks of fame and the valleys of private challenges, capturing the essence of a complex journey shaped by the public eye and private battles. By 2003, Tom Jones had distinguished himself as the wealthiest entertainer from Wales, with a reported fortune of $75,000 according to the BBC. This financial milestone underscored the extraordinary success Jones had cultivated over his career, maintaining his penchant for musical partnerships. In 2005, Jones collaborated with Australian pop icon John Farnham. This collaboration bore fruit in the form of the live album John Farnham and Tom Jones, together in concert, adding another notable achievement to Jones's storied career. In the early stages of his career, Tom Jones took his first steps into the music scene in 1963 as the lead vocalist of the Welsh beat group, Tommy Scott and the Senators. The group quickly captivated a local audience, carving out a name for themselves within South Wales. Their ambition led them to record several solo tracks under the guidance of the esteemed producer, Joe Meek, in the following year. Despite Meek's diligent efforts, a breakthrough in the industry proved challenging. The tide began to change in 1964 when Peter Sullivan, a producer for Decca, recognized their potential. Supported by Mills, Tom Jones was able to secure a deal with Decca, setting the stage for his inaugural single, Chills and Fever, released towards the end of 1964. Although it didn't make an impact on the charts, it was the subsequent single, It's Not Unusual, that catapulted him to fame thanks in part to its promotion by the offshore pirate radio station Radio Caroline. This success marked the ascent of Tom Jones into the limelight. 1965 marked a pivotal year in Tom Jones's career with his single It's Not Unusual Climbing to number one in the United Kingdom and breaking into the top ten in the United States. During this landmark year, Jones found himself at Paramount Studios in Hollywood, where he met Elvis Presley, his musical idol, for the first time. This encounter blossomed into a deep and enduring friendship between the two icons. However, as the late 1960s neared, there was a noticeable dip in Jones's popularity. This led his manager, Gordon Mills, to strategically reposition him as a crooner, encouraging Jones to explore and integrate a broader range of musical styles into his repertoire. Tom Jones stepped into the world of cinema in 1996 with a cameo as himself in Tim Burton's science fiction comedy Mars Attacks, highlighting his lasting relevance and charm in the music industry. The following year, in 1997, he lent his voice to the soundtrack of The Full Monty by recording a cover of Randy Newman's You Can Leave Your Hat On. 
This contribution added to the film's distinctive and powerful soundtrack, further showcasing Jones's versatility and impact in entertainment. The turn of the millennium in 2000 was momentous for Tom Jones, underscored by an illustrious invitation from President Bill Clinton to perform at the New Year's Eve Millennium celebrations in Washington, D.C. This notable event highlighted his global acclaim and status as an iconic figure in music. That same year, Joni's contributions to music were further acknowledged through several prestigious awards. He was honored with a Brit Award for Best Male Artist and celebrated the milestone of surpassing 40 hits in the UK, affirming his enduring presence and significance in the music scene. In 2003, Tom Jones's significant impact on the music industry was recognized with the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to Music, highlighting his lasting influence. The momentum continued into 2004, when Jones delivered a memorable performance of You Can Leave Your Hat On, alongside the Pussycat Dolls and Carmen Electra at the 7th annual VH1 Divas concert. Standing out as the sole male guest performer in a lineup of distinguished female artists, this collaboration marked another notable achievement in his illustrious career. 2006 was a landmark year for Tom Jones, culminating in being knighted by Queen Elizabeth II in recognition of his contributions to music, an accolade representing the pinnacle of achievement in the United Kingdom. Later, as Sir Tom Jones, he graced the stage at Wembley Stadium for the concert for Diana. Performing alongside Aerosmith's guitarist Joe Perry and soulful vocalist Joss Stone. Their performance was unforgettable, blending Jones's iconic hits with a surprising rendition of the Arctic Monkeys' I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor, illustrating his adaptability and appeal to audiences across generations. A passionate fan of boxing, Tom Jones has often lent his resonant voice to perform national anthems at major boxing events bringing a sense of majesty to these occasions. Continuing his vibrant career in 2008, Jones introduced 24 Hours through S-Curve Records, his first batch of new material in the United States after a hiatus of more than 15 years. Nearing his 70th year, he showcased an undiminished zeal for performing, maintaining an intense schedule of over 200 shows annually. This was part of a global tour aimed at promoting 24 Hours demonstrating his unwavering commitment to music and his desire to stay at the forefront of the industry. Jones's enduring energy and dynamism set him apart as an extraordinary performer. 2010 saw Tom Jones explore new musical territories. With the release of Praise and Blame, a bold departure from his familiar pop terrain into the deeper, soul-stirring realms of gospel and blues. Released on July 26th, this album was a rich tapestry of emotion, featuring evocative covers of tracks by legendary artists such as Bob Dylan, John Lee Hooker, and Billy Joe Shaver, and benefited from the collaboration with the esteemed Booker T. Jones. However, the album's release was marred by controversy. When an email from David Sharp, the then Vice President of Island Records, was leaked, Sharp's email conveyed his disappointment with the album's direction lamenting the investment of 1.5 miss in what he perceived as a disconcerting blend of Hemsel and Blues. A.C. Evan insofar as into question whether the anarpum was a sick jockey, estrant getting a disparity that deeply affected chance. The artist's response say, to sharp as the critic revealed a profound sense of betrayal and frustration. Underscoring the emotional depth and personal investment Jones had placed in praise and blame, the narrative of Tom Jones, marked by both triumphs and trials, stands as a vivid illustration of music's timeless resonance and the profound depths of the human soul. In January 2021, Jones unveiled plans for his upcoming endeavour, Surrounded by Time, an album destined to become his fourth anthology of cover songs. This compilation promised a poignant exploration of others' musical creations, all while being distinctly infused with Jones's singular flair, envisioned as a delicate fragment of his very spirit, surrounded by time, was meticulously crafted to weave through the annals of time with its meticulously produced tracks, showcasing the enduring essence of Jones's artistry. As the calendar turned to June 17th and 18th, 2022, a momentous occasion unfolded. 
Tom Jones, a legendary figure whose voice has captivated audiences for generations, returned to the Principality Stadium in Cardiff, his birthplace. Joining forces with the renowned band Stereophonics, they electrified the audience, weaving together a tapestry of nostalgia and contemporary energy that resonated deeply with those in attendance. The synergy of past and present filled the stadium with a unique emotional resonance. The highlight came on the second evening when their performance was broadcast live on BBC Two, serving as a vivid testament to the enduring allure and transformative power of live music. Our journey through the realms of country content concludes for today, yet this is merely the beginning of our dialogue. We're keen to engage with your thoughts and perspectives, so we invite you to delve into the comments section and enrich this conversation with your insights. If this expedition has captivated you, signify your enjoyment by leaving a nine in the comments, aiding in amplifying our message. Remember to subscribe to our channel to remain informed about our ongoing nostalgic explorations. The team at Do You Remember extends a heartfelt thank you for joining us today.